Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are really excited to have you with us. My name is Carrie Garand. I am here with the Seattle Aquarium. Uh, when I'm at the aquarium, I am the interpretation training coordinator and also one of our divers. And to dig in a little bit deeper to that, I've got a little bit of help today. We are really lucky. We've got some special behind the scenes sneak peeks for you into what it is to dive at the aquarium and care for uh, the amazing animals that live with us. So to help us with that, we've got the amazing Joel Hollander. Hey, Joel. Hey, good morning or good afternoon to whoever's watching. Hi, I'm Joel Hollander at the Seattle Aquarium. Nice and to be with you. Yeah, Joel, uh, you are really a great person to help us with this today. What exactly do you do at the aquarium? Well, over my 20 year tenure here at the aquarium, I've done a lot of things, um, mostly taking care of cold water fish and vertebrates that live in the Pacific Northwest, as well as oversee a lot of the, the dive, dive safety operations. Wonderful. So uh, in just a moment, we're going to get started with a special video that we have for everyone. Uh, before we do, I just want to give a shout out. Uh, if you've got questions, we want to know. So we would really love to be able to answer anything that you want to know more about that's catching your eye that you're interested in. So please just pop those into the chat. Uh, we'll be monitoring those and we'll do our absolute best to get to as many of them as we can. Um, and so what do you think, Joel? Are we ready to dive in? I'm ready. Let's dive. Let, let's do it. I know it's one of our favorite things to do together. I actually get to dive with Joel pretty regularly. So I know asking the first question is always hard, so I'm just gonna do that right now. Joel, where are we looking uh, at the aquarium? This is a place that many of us probably don't get to see. Yeah, this is kind of behind the scenes uh, shot of one of our you know, 70 to 80 uh, volunteer divers that help support uh, the, uh, the exhibits and the aquarium's mission. Wonderful. Our divers are really the beating heart of the aquarium. They do so much for us. And we can see them here, as you said, gearing up. This is a lot of gear uh, to dive locally here in our cold waters. Um, are those dry suits that they're wearing? They are. Those are two different brands of uh, a dry suit you see in there. They are completely environmentally sealed from the, the cold uh, water. So they're dry underneath most of the time. <laughs> Most of that, fingers crossed, right? That's right, what we right. hope. Exactly. Uh, and you said cold water. The water in, in most of our exhibits is coming from right, from right underneath the aquarium. That's Puget Sound water. What's the temperature these days, Joel? Um, I checked in today and we're, we're riding right around 50 degrees Fahrenheit. All right. So nice and balmy. Yeah, <laughs> nice and balmy for sure. Definitely a little chilly. And this exhibit that they're getting into, tell us a little bit about the underwater dome. What are we going to be seeing here? Well, it's a it's a mixed species exhibit that that is about 400,000 gallons of cold uh, Puget Sound water. Um, and we see lots of different fish, which you'll see in the video. These divers are just getting ready to descend and start their morning activities. Oh, morning activities. So there's a lot of jobs that our divers help us with uh, underwater. I always like to think of them as underwater chores. They're definitely more fun underwater than to do uh, in my own house. But what are some of the things that the divers are doing every single day at the aquarium? Well, we have dives that go on um, twice a day. And divers do anything from cleaning the acrylic windows that you're seeing there to feed all those hungry salmon uh, in the exhibit there. So they also you know, vacuum up debris and um, do animal quality assessments and, and animal health assessments uh, for this exhibit. Oh, we can see our, one of our divers at work there offering a little bit of tasty, delicious, sustainable seafood. Nice little tasty anchovy for that rockfish, maybe a little capelin for the perch there. Um, and those were some good, like good size uh, goodie bags that they have. And so they've got quite a bit of feeding to do. We're seeing a lot of fish. Um, how many animals live in the underwater dome? Well, uh, we keep track. Uh, roughly, there's about uh, two to 2,000 uh, fish in the exhibit, about 30 different species of, of Pacific Northwest animals. These guys eat well, that's for sure. 
Uh, we've got someone joining us that misses diving in the dome. We miss you too, Don. Um, oh, another question coming in. What type of fish is that? Well, I'm not quite sure which one we may have seen. So Joel, maybe you can introduce us to some of the fish that we're seeing right now, like this one that's swimming up the side of the dome. Yeah, that's a, a super cool. That's our Pacific spiny dogfish, one of our local, local sharks that we see here in Puget Sound. Uh, we also saw a, a tiger rockfish, and there's a lot of blue striped perch uh, swimming in and out of the, the camera. Oh, you see this cool. diver is hand feeding one of our Pacific spiny dogfish. And as you can see, that those guys chomp and chew and swallow. They don't really chew their food. So they just take a, a nice big chunk out that they can uh, gut down. I love that shot. You get that yeah. like little that that glimpse of like the little cookie cutter bite that they take as they um, chomp down on that herring there. And these spiny dogfish, these are local sharks. We find them right here. Uh, you know, living living in Seattle. And um, some people might be kind of surprised that we have sharks that live here. We don't necessarily see them all the time. Um, so I know spiny dogfish, uh, the ones we see here, maybe how, how big is that? It's kind of hard to tell from just the video there. Yeah, exactly. To just give you a perspective, the, uh, the males um, are usually a little four to four and a half feet where the, the females that sexually mature can get a little bit larger, five, five and a half feet max. This is kind of a medium size to smaller shark. Uh, now here comes a fish yeah. that often gets mistaken for a shark. It looks very sharky, but in fact is something a little bit different. What was that? Yeah, that was one of our green sturgeon. We have four sturgeon in our uh, underwater dome. And that guy was just kind of patrolling up and around uh, doing his laps. I love it. Getting a glimpse of all the diverse animals that call this exhibit home. Um, we've got a few more questions popping in here. So oh, good. Good. Uh, the, 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 I thank you so much uh, for looping back when we asked what type of fish is that? And we didn't quite catch it. It said it was kind of a yellow and white fish. What, what, what do you think that might be Joel? Yellow and white. Well, we have orange and white is uh, typical of a um, tiger rockfish. Maybe that's what you saw either that or maybe a, a canary rockfish also was in a couple of those shots. Yeah, we've easily got a good like 10 to 15 different species of rockfish, yeah. sort of oval shaped body. Mm -hmm. um, and then another really great question just about volunteer diving and how do we become a volunteer diver at the Seattle Aquarium? That sounds pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah, it's cool. It is uh, some of the best diving you get to do in the Northwest for sure. Basically, the, the qualifications are you have to be a minimum of a rescue certified diver and be available at a, at a consistent basis to, to dive with us. Just go on our website and, and you could walk yourself through the through, through how the, all the steps. Wonderful. And we have been whisked away Quickly. to somewhere yeah. a little bit warmer and we're snorkeling, not diving, but we're still with some sharks. So this is uh, Seattle Aquarium staff. So we haven't completely lost track of the aquarium here. Uh, where are we and what are we doing, Joel? <laughs> we are um, viewing some really cool sharks right there in Oahu. That's a shark swimming out of the picture was a sandbar shark and coming towards us right now, I believe is a Galapagos shark. We spent 20 years in the, in Hawaii doing research and, and some collections um, um, with, uh, um, to help out our, our collection and to do research on the big island. So um, really fortunate to spend time with, look how gorgeous that is. Oh man, yeah. take me right back. What a beautiful fish. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. And that just kind of makes me think, you know, that could seem really overwhelming to be that close to those sharks or that close to this shark, um, you know, being in the water with these animals. Um, uh -huh. do, you ever, do you ever get worried, scared, overwhelmed, excited? What does it feel like? Um, yes to all those, but <laughs> mostly in awe. You know, you, the worry starts because you don't have, for me, you don't have enough education or background to, to, to really understand what you're doing. But as soon as you educate yourself about these animals and, um, and, and how they act and operate, you lose the worry and just you go into that awe. Like these six gill sharks that are filmed right here at the Seattle Aquarium, 
every single time I'm in the water with them or watching any video, it is an awe-inspiring moment. Look at that beautiful animal. In fact, hey. that animal was tagged way back in June of 2003, oh uh, one of our first tagging events ever. Uh, what a beautiful female animal right there. That's awesome. And that's when you say tagging, we can see that kind of little yellow thing. Um, that's the tag, a visual marker that can tell us or anyone else who saw that female um, which shark that is. So we took part uh, in that research um, that was happening right underneath the Seattle Aquarium. Um, and I want to I want to loop back because I think this will help to answer a question that came in just a little while ago about what are the largest species of sharks that we find in our area? Is this it? Ooh. Biggest. Yep, that's it. You know, for for a, a while in the 70s, we had basking sharks um, that were found in Puget Sound and, and uh, in, in our bays, but we don't see them anymore. So the next next guy up would be this six gill shark. In fact, they can get to be 15 feet long, over 1300 pounds. I mean, this is a big, big fish. <laughs> For sure. And thinking about how big that animal is, they're coming in, they're eating that chum that's there. Uh, a great question that came in, how are, how are we tagging them? What is that process like as a diver? Well, after doing literature reviews about how other researchers and institutions tag sharks, we came up with this, this uh, methodology. We employed a, uh, it's called a floy tag with a, with a, a discrete um, shape to it that uh, would go into the dorsal musculature of the animal and um, and then it would stick there and we could then as they return to our research site we could uh, track how often they come back and um, and with what association they have with any other sharks as well so thinking about those sightings have we seen any in the salish sea this year another question came in great question you know we have we've seen a, a small uptick in sightings of sharks, but not by the Seattle Aquarium, but by other enthusiast divers, um, mostly down in the South Sound. And they've all been pretty consistent with what we saw, which were juveniles and, and sub-adult animals. At, at night, they come up shallower to diveable depths where the divers can interact with them. So we do find six scale sharks pretty deep in, in potentially our waters and waters around the world. These uh, sharks can be pretty widespread. And yeah, this is a very cosmopolitan shark and <laughs> that um, they, anywhere there's cold and deep water, you could find these guys. <laughs> I love it. Um, and it just, it fits so well with another question that popped up. Um, what are some of the other plants and animals that are living deeper in the Puget Sound, like at the deepest depths of the sound or how deep does the sound get? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, I don't recall off the top of my head, 900 feet in some spots, I believe. The, the depth of like the Space Needle is, is what we're looking at. And, um, and you'll find all kinds of cool animals down there. There's also its relative, the, the spotted ratfish lives there, down there. And um, there's lots of interesting animals down deep. Uh, really, our local waters are home to so many amazing animals that we've gotten to get a glimpse at today. And, you know, at the Seattle Aquarium, we're all about inspiring conservation of our marine environment. And Joel, you've shared so many just really fantastic things about the animals here. Um, what are some of the things that you like to keep in mind um, to really help these animals, whether it be a six scale shark or a spiny dogfish or a rockfish or a salmon? Um, is there something that you like to kind of do in your everyday life that could help inspire the rest of us? Yeah, I, I do. And I don't, I, for me, it's just about educating yourself, making educated decisions, taking the time to get on the internet or open a book or have conversations. and and really educate yourself about how we affect the, the, our local waters and our, and our areas uh, in Puget Sound and in, the, and in the world, because really we are one big ocean, right? I love it. We are 100%. And so you know what, everybody joining us today, you've already done it. <laughs> You're already taking that step to learn a little bit more about the amazing animals that call the ocean their home and how we impact them. So I just want to know our time today, Joel. Uh, we've got a few more moments to chat. So I want to shout out to everybody watching. Um, we probably have the opportunity to take just a couple more questions. 
So as you're thinking about what those final questions might be, uh, I just wanna share that we are really excited to be able to bring um, programming like this to everybody for free. And if anyone is able and would like to donate, we uh, would be so happy. Donations of any and every size are really truly helpful um, to make sure that we can keep doing this, uh, especially while we are shut down right now due to COVID. So thank you in advance uh, to everyone for great questions. Um, and let's see, I'm gonna track our comments here, see what other ones have trickled in. Um, so there was another question. We've got a lot of questions coming in kind of about that um, tagging and tracking process. So is that what we, we kind of saw like a stick go in there? Was that yeah. the, the tagging yeah, process? It's, it's, a, it's a standard pole spear that we had a special modified uh, tagging uh, tip applicator made for us that, um, that, that we utilized in the field. Great. All right. I think that might do it for today. Uh, Joel, thank you again so much for sharing your passion for uh, everything that you do at the Seattle Aquarium. Um, thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, we're really looking forward to welcoming everybody back to the aquarium when we are able to do so safely. And until then, please do join us on our upcoming virtual adventures. We've got another really exciting one coming up uh, on New Year's, but we're not doing New Year's Eve. I know I can barely stay up that late, so we are doing a rocking rockfish noon Year's Eve. Joel, do you like to stay up late for New Year's? I, I do. <laughs> I, I push myself. I like I like it. <laughs> All right. So whether you're staying up till midnight or you, you can join us um, at noon um, and please just uh, look at the chat, check out our website um, and join us for that one or we'll see you next time. All right, you guys stay safe and, and keep diving. Thanks, everyone.